Well, hello and welcome to part three of our uh, series on the remaking of this uh, bamboo shanked pipe where we're replacing the old stummel with a new stummel. As odd as that sounds. So, uh, we've allowed the epoxy to cure here. Uh, this is the leftover rock solid. So we're good with that. Uh, the next step then, as we're ultimately going to be bringing these things together uh, after we truncate the shank a bit. Uh, next step I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of, a, of an ebonite spacer here. Now there is one at this end and you can see hopefully that it is uh, quite narrow. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. I measured it uh, earlier. Um, we'll probably shoot for something similar here. It could be a little bigger because honestly this is not going to be seen since it blends in perfectly with the stem so it's not really a, going to have to have a visual balance across those two and i want to make it a little bit bigger just because i don't know how much i'm going to have to use it as a transition between this and the bamboo so i'm probably going to go for an eighth of an inch and see how that looks and we can always thin it down if uh, that appears to be too um, too much so take this over to the lathe face it off Drill a 3 16th hole to accommodate the stainless steel tubing, and uh, then we'll part off a piece that's uh, 1 8 inch, and I'll come back once I have that. So as promised, I am back with the little uh, ebonite spacer. It is uh, somewhere between uh, a 16th and an eighth of an inch. It's about 3 16ths. And it, it fits in there fairly well, as would be expected, because this should be perpendicular to the face of the bamboo, so it does fit well. Uh, once that's clamped in, it'll basically be a seamless fit, so I'm really happy with that. So, obviously I need to work on this in terms of cutting it and drilling it. And once this is attached, it'll be relatively simple to fit the ebonite to the briar because I can sand the briar. The problem with the bamboo is that you really can't sand it. Um, in fact, any scratches on this are going to be a big problem because bamboo has an enamel on it, a uh, natural enamel, and when that is scratched, you can't sand it out because you just sand away the enamel. So in order to protect this, what I'm going to have to do is very carefully fit this to the bamboo. And then once I've got that fit perfect, then I will mate these two together and worry about making the transition between the ebonite and the briar. So it's a lot of slow, tedious work coming up. Uh, lots of sanding and filing, uh, much of that being done off of this because I, I again, don't want to scratch the, the bamboo. I need to be really careful about that. So I'm going to do that uh, off screen because it will just basically be a lot of slow tedious work that you don't need to see. Uh, the tools I'll be using are, are basically sandpapers and files. I don't think there's anything all that special that I'll that I'll be doing here. Uh, I might use the belt sander just to like rapidly take off this this large piece up here. Uh, maybe trim down this a little bit, but I want to be real careful about getting too close to, to this. So I'll uh, get that started and I'll bring you back. Uh, well, I'll bring you back once it's fit. So we worked on this uh, quite a bit and we've got it close but not 100% perfect and that's okay for now because we're going to want to sand this uh, in order to you know bring up the shine and everything so it's I can still feel a ridge but for the most part it's pretty tight uh, there is a little divot there to match the divot here didn't want to get too excited about that because I don't know yet how it's going to match up with this uh, that will be on the bottom sure about that uh, sorry yeah so that'll be the top that'll be the bottom so we'll get that sorted out but but by and large we're in good shape I've tacked this onto the bamboo using a little little drop of super glue just to hold it in place now we've got to turn our attention to the stummel and this is where things are going to get interesting because I'm gonna to have to well first off this is not drilled the tobacco chamber is drilled, but the airway is not. Uh, that is a centered hole, so I know that that was just put there probably as a uh, 
a live center or just a center to to turn this uh, the shank on uh, or it may be it's it's not well it's not necessarily true that if I stand this up perpendicular and drill in that spot it'll go to the right place so I need to be careful about that so what I've done and I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see these marks that I've got here but I'll, I'll also point them out to you so there's a mark right here it is actually indicating the bottom of the bowl and that was done by if I put this into the bottom and just mark it off with my thumbnail I actually used a, um, a pair of calipers to do this but you get the idea and then I come back out here that's coming to about that point right there so that's the bottom of the bowl and we've got a line here that's pretty much the center of the shank and this is the point where I'm going to cut it off. So uh, that, that leaves a, about a half inch from here to here, and that should be enough just to visually tie the things together. So I'm gonna cut this here, and then I'm gonna use this line, which I've extended to that bowl bottom point, to line this up, and then I will drill straight along that line. But of course, centered this way on the shank. Uh, the first thing I will drill, however, will not be on that axis. It will be on the axis that is perpendicular to this face of the shank once it's cut. And that'll be a 3 16 inch hole to accept the stainless steel tubing. Then I will come in with a uh, probably 1 8 inch hole I'll have, to, I'll have to think about this a bit. Um, and that will be the, the airway all the way through. Uh, I may not use I've, I've got to think about the, the dimension of the airway still. Uh, hopefully, after that's done, it'll line up nicely down here and we'll, we'll be all set. Uh, and then we can get to doing the final shaping on this bowl and matching it up to the ebonite and making everything look pretty. So... That's the plan. I'm going to think about how to best do this. I don't know if I'm just going to do it um, in the drill press or if I'm going to try to find a way to chuck this in the lathe, uh, which could be a bit tricky, but might be a better option. Anyway, I'll think about that and I'll bring you back once I got the answer. Well, we're starting to look a bit more uh, pipe-like, or at least getting close to something that uh, you could smoke. Uh, and you could probably smoke this right now, but it's ugly. Um, so what I did was, as I, as I said, I've uh, gone ahead and drilled the stummel. Uh, I, cut, I cut the shank, uh, faced it off so that it's 90 degrees to the airway, drilled out the diameter for this um, stainless steel fitting, drilled through, and honestly, I could have done a better job drilling through. Uh, this is the first time I've done this. It's a little high, but it, but the bottom of this bowl is a little conical as well, so it would have been hard to, to hit that. I think it's going to be okay. Um, this fits in there nicely. I did trim off the stainless steel tube, and the bamboo is not concentric because of that natural um, airway that we talked about in an earlier installment. So you can see there's some bits where the is a bit high and there's some bits where the uh, ebonite's a bit high and my job now is going to be to make that all even and somehow transition this evenly so it looks nice. You see some shiny spots on here. I tried to super glue some blocks on and, and put it in a lathe but it, it just didn't work so I wound up doing everything in the drill press. But we're, we're actually in really good shape now. So just all that we've got left now is shaping of the, the briar and some final epoxy work and we're done. So I think I'm going to actually uh, call this portion to a close and we'll have one more installment. Um, I don't know how much of the briar shaping I'm going to actually do on film just because it's a lot of tedious sanding and stuff like that. And unfortunately, other than sort of taking out these large facets uh, most of this is going to be done by hand so 
uh, we'll, we'll see how much of this I actually put on video. But uh, hopefully you're enjoying it. Uh, get Got a pretty good idea of what would be involved in doing something like this if for some reason you ever decided to do it. <laughs> Again, I, I, I know that this is a crazy thing, but uh, Father Anthony and I thought it would be fun, and honestly, it has been a, a great deal of fun. So I'll get on with this, and I'll bring you back in the next installment. We'll review some of the progress, and we will hopefully have a finished product. So until then, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for your likes, your subscriptions, your comments. Uh, always look forward to your comments. You all take care, and I'll talk to you very soon.